Welcome to Have History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and today, following on last week's video about the American Revolution, I bring you another video about the American Revolution, this time talking about the crossing of the Delaware. By December of 1776, the Continental Army was on the run. It had been pushed out of New York, out of New Jersey, and it was now in Pennsylvania. General George Washington would make a daring attack on the Hessian troops across the Delaware River in Trenton, New Jersey. The battle is famous, but more impactful and more famous than the battle is the simple crossing of the Delaware River. The movement made by General Washington is something to be commended. He did an amazing feat, and I want to give you a first-hand account of a soldier who was with George Washington at the time. His name was Elisha Bostwick. His entire memoirs are published, so you can read his entire life in the Continental Army, and I encourage you to do so. It is a fascinating read, but I want to read you a short excerpt about the crossing of the Delaware River. Our army passed through Bethlehem and Moravian town, and so on to the Delaware, which we crossed nine miles north of Trenton, and encamped on the Pennsylvania side, and there remained to the 24th of December. Our whole army was then set on motion, and toward evening began to recross the Delaware, but by obstructions of ice in the river, did not get all the way across till quite late in the evening and all the time a constant fall of snow with some rain, and finally our march began with the torches of our field pieces stuck in the exalters. They sparkled and blazed in the storm all night, and about daylight a halt was made, at which time His Excellency and aides came to near the front on the side of the path where soldiers stood. I heard His Excellency as he was coming on speaking to and encouraging the soldiers. The words he spoke as he passed by where I stood, and in my hearing, were these. Soldiers, keep by your officers. For God's sake, keep by your officers, spoke in a deep and solemn voice. While passing a slanting, slippery bank, His Excellency's horse's hind feet both slipped from under him, and he seized the horse's mane, and the horse recovered. Our horses were then unharnessed, and the artillerymen prepared. We marched on. And it was not long before we heard the out sentries of the enemy, both on the road we were and the eastern road. And their out guards retreated firing, and our army, then with a quick step pushing on upon both roads, at the same time entered the town. Their artillery taken, they resigned with little opposition, about 900, all Hessians with four brass field pieces. The remainder, crossing the bridge at the lower end of town, escaped march the next day with our prisoners back to an encampment. I here make a few remarks as to the personal appearance of the Hessians. They are of a moderate stature and rather broad shoulders, their limbs not of equal proportion, light complexion with a bluish tinge, hair cued as tight to the head as possible, sticking straight back like the handle of an iron skillet, their uniform blue with black facings, brass drums which made a tinkling sound, their flag or standard of the richest black silk and the devices upon it and the lettering in gold leaf. When crossing the Delaware with the prisoners in flat bottom boats, the ice continually struck the boats, driving them down the stream. The boatmen endeavoring to clear off the ice pounded the boat, and stamping with their feet back into the prisoners to do the same and they all set to jumping at once with their cues flying up and down, soon shook off the ice from the boats, and the next day recrossed the Delaware again and returned back to Trenton. And there, on the first day of January 1777, our year service expired, and then by the pressing solicitation of His Excellency, a part of those whose time was out consented to a $10 bounty to stay six weeks longer. And although desirous as others to return home, I engaged to stay that time and made every exertion in my power to make as many of the soldiers stay with me as I could, and quite a number did engage with me who otherwise would have went home. This is a harrowing tale. George Washington pushed to his limit being driven out of New York. His men's enlistments are coming up. He has a few more days to hopefully make an impact against the British, and he did. This battle not only rose the morale of the Americans, but it let the British know the Continental Army was not down and out just yet. 
thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed this account. I know I've got at least one more Revolutionary War account I want to read to y'all. And until next week, have a nice day.